It's not if, but when. That's what one of our country's leading experts on medical cannabis says about marijuana laws changing in Oklahoma. This is the state where he grew up. He recently returned home, and I met him at the airport for a Fox 23 exclusive. <laughs> Sunil Kumar Agarwal and his wife were all smiles, greeted by family at Tulsa International. Especially happy their baby boy, Ishan, was sleeping peacefully after a bout with a stomach bug. It was the first time that we'd have like, kind of a scare like that. He was throwing up, not feeling that great. It made him think about the estimated one million Americans, including many children with uncontrolled epileptic seizures. My gosh, what it must be like for these parents. Like this is their daily, is dealing with like a sick kid. The Epilepsy Foundation supports increased access to medical marijuana, saying nothing should stand in the way of patients gaining access to potentially life-saving treatment. But Oklahoma law does stand in the way. The dangerous thing about cannabis is getting caught. This Oklahoma marijuana user risks being arrested every day because he has HIV. He says he needs this to sleep, to keep his weight, and some research shows cannabis may even be able to stop the spread of the disease. That's one of the reasons I thought that my viral load was uh, categorized as exceptionally low. What you're doing. That brings us back to Dr. Agarwal, who explains compounds unique to marijuana interact with something in the human body actually named after cannabis, the endocannabinoid system. When you look at the distribution of those receptors in the brain, nervous system, immune cells, that's why it, it has that effect on inflammation. That's why it has pain-reducing effects. That's why it has redu reductions in muscle spasm and seizure, seizure activity because it's involved in it's the circuits in the body that, that govern those things. It is no small irony the doctor who's pushing for relaxed marijuana laws is from Muskogee. We don't smoke marijuana in Muskogee. Yes, the place where Merle Haggard sang people don't smoke marijuana is where Sunil Agarwal was born and raised. He was among the top chemistry students at the Oklahoma School of Science and Mathematics and now is a senior resident at NYU Langone Medical Center in Manhattan. Just this month, he spoke at the New York Academy of Medicine's conference examining marijuana and drug policies. Cannabis medicine was in the U.S. pharmacopoeia for over 100 years. You know, it's not like it's this um, radical new thing. <laughs> This Okie from Muskogee is now about to take his passion for cannabis medicine to the National Institutes of Health. How does a doctor who is so outspoken against a federal policy move on to the NIH? I know. Well, just goes to show you that, you know, this is not a monolithic entity. This is, there's real human beings there. And they were very enthusiastic about my application. And um, I think they, they said to me, you know, well, if something works, we're all for it. But federal law and Oklahoma law are still against it which turns Oklahomans like this into outlaws, even though he's just fighting a disease. What I've already extracted, I can now use down here to concentrate further. His extraction of cannabis concentrates to make the capsules he takes once a day could send him to prison for decades. You can't tell anybody, you can't do anything, you can't help other people unless you can trust them, and that's very, very hard to do whenever you're looking at two to life or extraction. Prison is not the right place for these kind of people. You know, it's you need, these people need to be, you know, under the care of their doctor in the in the in the community that supports them. And Dr. Agarwal strongly believes cannabis medicine should be left to doctors and their patients in Oklahoma and every state. Just today he spoke at the annual meeting of the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy as part of a regulatory update entitled Cannabis is here to stay. It's an